to my first project as a brand ambassador for Graphic 45. Um, for this project I've chosen to use Cottage Life. Um, it's actually not really my colours, blues and pinks like this, but oh my goodness it is just the prettiest, most gorgeous set of papers I've ever seen. So I couldn't resist but have a go. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do is just take you really quickly through this little book and then I'm going to show you how to make it. There's two ways to make it. There's a super simple quick and easy cheat way and then there's a way where we're going to make all of our own bits and pieces from scratch. But bear with me and you'll see as we go through. Now the book itself is a little bit of an odd size and the reason that it's an odd size is because of the way that it's made. It's actually made from a whole load of envelopes um, and I can't find my ruler so I'll have to use this just to show you that it is eight and a half by um, five inches um, and the size that you make it very much depends on the envelopes and what you've got um, but it's all about kind of being a little bit out of sync, a little bit um, mixed up I guess. Uh, it's not a formal book at all, it's just full of um, little interesting nooks and crannies I would say. Now I'm not one for using ribbon usually but I couldn't resist with this. Um, I've used a sort of a light blue organza here just to, to keep that all tied together and because the papers themselves just totally lended it uh, lended themselves to it and you open up the book and what you've got here is space for uh, a 6 by 4 photo and what I have done in a couple of places through this book I've used some photos of my grandparents um, just to give you some ideas of what it might look like with photos in it but this page is just flat I haven't done anything fancy at all um, but this here what I've done is um, you can't see it terribly well but I've actually made an envelope this is an envelope here and then inside it we have got a couple of photo mats just nice and quick and easy to put your photos on and then I have done lots and lots of fussy cutting and decorated up um, the front as well and layered quite a lot of it up so that's the first page you turn it over and then what we've got here is another flip up flap and then um, open up these two bits here. And like I said throughout, I have put a couple of photos of my grandparents. This is my, my granddad, my uh, paternal father, just as he was about to go off and work um, in Africa. There you go, quite unusual in those days, but that's what he did. This is another envelope and in this book I've actually made them from scratch and I will be showing you how to do that. And then we've got a little pull, up, pull out here, little um, photo mat as well, just for a little bit of added interest. Turn that over and we've got a very simple pocket and I've used a couple of the Graphic 45 tags which I've cut down um, just as photo mats and I've added um, some of these, um, some more of the ribbon on there as well. Uh, there's plenty of um, fussy cut items too. Over here again we've got a mirror of this first envelope that we had um, but this time I've put it together a little bit differently. So we've got our front here, space for a photo there, more and more flaps, a pull out photo mat there, still decorating the underneath but that just looks like some extra flaps so I'm kind of pleased with that and then turn it over, love this image open that up and you've got space for a couple of photo mats or journaling or whatever you want to do. Over here um, on this bit we've got a little um, photo mat thing that opens out, There's lots and lots of space for photos here and that flips up um, and then underneath here you can see your envelope and there's a couple of photo mats in there as well. Now as I said this book is kind of really unstructured, um, it, it's not meant to be neat and tidy, it's not meant to be um, perfectly obvious, it's just kind of a mix and match of, of, of all different envelope sizes and styles. And then on the back here I've just got uh, some more photo mats. Here what I've done is I've taken some of the cutter parts and I've layered them up um, I've gutted some of them behind just so that I've got plenty to, to layer up there because uh, that envelope just gives us such a lovely flat space to work on. Turn that over and I've done the same over here um, but I, and I've added, um, I've, I've layered up my um, sort of 
these are like stamps aren't they here and then uh, some of these gorgeous gorgeous pink roses open that up and there's my grandparents on their wedding day space for a photo open that up there now you can see the base of the envelope and here we've got another photo mat okay and actually that can go either way it's entirely up to you which way you you want to have those around i'm going to put them that way over here we've got another long envelope that opens up with a photo mat inside it Oops. then turn that over and what i've got here once again grandparents wedding day um, and then over on this page what i've got more layering up we've got a little flap here that opens up to uh, a photo mat there open that up again and we've got inside here we've got two of the um tags i haven't cut those ones down because i just wanted them to kind of peep up um over the top of the book just to show that you know this really wasn't um formal uh, in any way shape or form now the um binding is a really really simple accordion binding which i'll show you in a moment and as i said my closure i'm just using a ribbon just to hold it all together this is one of the quickest and easiest books that you can make especially if you do a bit of cheating um, and use ready-made envelopes so if you want to go off and grab some or grab yourself some paper come back in a minute and i'll show you how to put the book together okay so i think the first thing for us to do is to make our envelopes that form the base of our book now what i'll do is i'll go through how to do that first um, and then when we come to actually bind it all together i'll go through how you can bind this book if you are going to be using your own ready-made envelopes okay so um i'm going to be using this really really old first time round nutcracker sweet collection paper that i've got left over from a previous life i have quite a few sheets of this left over uh, but what i'm going to do is i'm going to be um cutting out for my um envelopes now do bear in mind as well to some degree that you're going to have to think about direction when you are folding and cutting your envelopes i will say that i know that for a fact that some of mine are upside down um, and there's nothing that i can do about that but you can always cover it for example um here this this one i think is probably a prime example you can see a lot of this um that i needed to be the right way up this is the back of page two um, but when you turn it onto the front because of the flap it's upside down which you can just cover that with you know flowers or or whatever and um, you can't see it so much under here because i deliberately covered that up just to show you that um you know that does happen but do bear that in mind so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to cut out all six of my envelopes i've used six you can use four you can use ten it doesn't matter it's all exactly the same process so first of all what i'm going to do is i am going to cut this is um i've referred to each envelope as a page so i've got page one two three four five six so we're going to work now page one and page three are actually exactly the same in terms of making and cutting so i'm going to cut those out first so those are two at six by six inches okay so that's two at six by six i then want you to cut one at eight by eight inches now make sure you keep all your off cuts because you'll be using those for all sorts of flips and flaps and all sorts of things so i've got two at six by six and one at eight by eight i then want want one at nine by nine and then i want two at nine and a half by nine and a half so that's two at nine and a half by nine and a half okay Right, now we're going to make the envelopes in two ways there's two very distinct types of envelopes here and i've called them different things i've called this one 
even though it's not square I've called it a square envelope and that's because it kind of folds in a sort of a square for want of a better description so this is a square envelope and this is like a very traditional sort of envelope shape that you can see there this one I've called a long envelope because it's got much more of a long envelope shape to it so pages one and three are what I've called square envelopes so if we start with that paper we've got two at six by six now what we need to do is find the middle first of all so I'm going to grab my ruler which I had there it is and I'm just going to find out where the middle is which will be at three by three which is there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold in that corner to that middle point there okay and then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side so that those two corners meet each other okay then what we're going to do is we're going to find the middle point along there so that's uh, one two three four so that's two and one eighth which is about there and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to bring this point up to there like that okay and that as you can see is starting to make my envelope shape now i want to get rid of this bit here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to mark where that space is across there i'll just grab my trimmer really quickly oops avalanche of paper stay and i'm just going to cut that off like that Okay, so when I fold that up, you can see I've got a very traditional envelope shape there. And then what I'm going to do is just fold that over like that. So that forms the top part of the envelope. Now, just to make it all kind of nice and tidy, I'm going to just snip off that corner there. So we've got this bit of our envelope. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to snip off that little corner just to get rid of some of the bulk so let's just snip that off there and snip that off there so now I can put my envelope together like that and it's much less bulky so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here hopefully I'm gonna glue that there I'll just get my bone folder which is presumably also buried here it is and just make sure that that's all nice sharp sharp creases okay so that is envelope number one while we're here just because it shows you again i'm going to show you how to make envelope number three because it's exactly the same so the first thing i'm going to do is just mark the middle which obviously is at three inches like that i'm going to fold that corner in there like that and I'm going to fold that corner in there like that so the tips are touching okay let's find the middle point here which was two and one eighth of an inch there and I'm going to point that point up to that dot that I've just made there like that okay and that makes my nice envelope shape 
I'm just going to chop these off. I know I'm doing it in a slightly different order, but it doesn't really matter. So let's take those corners off there. Like that. Okay, there is our envelope. We need to take that bit off. Okay, so let's glue that down. And let's fold that over to form our envelope. Okay, dead easy. So those are our two envelopes. That's actually envelope page one and page three. Now our page two envelope is eight by eight inches which is this one here and this is what I call a long envelope. So for a long envelope you are going to need a scoreboard. So if you grab your scoreboard we are going to first score the sides. So this is going to be the way up of the envelope okay. But we're going to score the sides and we're going to score on the eight inch side so that means eight inches at the top we're going to score at half an inch and we're going to score at seven and a half inches okay turn that around 90 degrees so we're then scoring on the other eight inch side and we're going to score at two and a half inches and at six inches okay so I don't know how well you can see this but I've got some bits here I've got three areas here and then two half inch down the side but now I need to cut some of these off so I'm going to start in the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to cut that off so I'm going to snip on that score line all the way up to that first score line there and I'm just going to cut at a bit of an angle like that okay and then I'm going to do exactly the same at the top so I'm going to cut up to there at a bit of an angle and I'm going to cut on that score line down like that okay so you can see what we've got here is a bit of a tab and I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side so I'm going to snip that off on the score line and then the same on the top here like that okay so what we've got a piece what we've got is a piece that looks like that we need to then fold on these score lines here so that our flaps point in okay we might as well burnish those while we're here Then we're going to fold that up and as you can see now we've got a very definite envelope shape and if I fold that on top you can see absolutely definitely an envelope. So if you want to you can round these corners, I'd love to except I have no idea where my corner rounder is. I don't know how I keep losing stuff here. I'll use the old one. Old faithful which keeps breaking on me it's so old okay so I've got that and now I'm just going to put some glue there and there just to hold that in place like that okay so that is what I call a long envelope so now what we've got are pages one two and three okay right page four is another long envelope and this was nine by nine inches okay and we're going to make it in exactly the same way so grab your scoreboard and score remember this is it's this way up 
score at half an inch and eight and a half inches and then I want you to score at two and a half and six and a half inches okay there we go oh lights a bit bright in here now sunshine's coming out typically after it's been pouring down all day so we're going to do the same let's snip off up that score line like that and then again at the top okay so that looks like that snip that side off like that and then the same on that side there okay right so fold those flaps in like that we're going to fold that one up like that we're going to fold that one down like that okay so that is forming another long envelope so i'm just going to round corners of the top flap I'm going to put some glue there fold that up and you can see I've got my fourth envelope there now our next two envelopes are both exactly the same size they're both nine and a half inches square but we're going to make one into a long envelope and one into what i've called a square envelope so let's find the middle first so half of nine and a half oh god half of nine is four and a half so four and three quarters let's see if my maths is anything like right four and three quarters four and three quarters oh it would appear that actually my maths isn't too bad so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to fold that corner into my middle point there like that and i'm going to do the same over here like that now this is going to be a different measurement than the original one that space across there is i can't see hang on is six and three quarters so halfway is going to be three and three eighths of an inch i think i think that's about there does that look like it's the middle wow I'm good at this math stuff okay so that piece folds up to there like that okay let's measure that cut it off or at least make a mark so let's cut that off okay and I want to cut that weird little corner off stop it being so bulky okay so that is going to fit on there like that lovely go let's glue that down okay and then I'm going to fold that over to make a proper envelope shape like that let's hope that's square ish 
not too bad and let's burnish okay so my sixth envelope is also nine and a half by nine and a half but what I'm going to want to do now is grab my scoreboard and I'm going to score on the nine and a half inch side at half an inch and at nine inches turn it round and then I'm want to, going to want to score at two and a half and at seven I'm just going to cheat a bit make sure that yeah that'll do right okay so what I've got to do now is just cut these funny little corners off here so I'm just going to score uh, just going to cut along that score line just cut that off same up the top here same on this side like that and the same like that so fold these flaps in at the side like that we're going to fold that up like that and hopefully this will fold down and cover like that okay so uh, here we go let's burnish that like that put some glue on there and we have all six of our envelopes made now you can put these in any order you like it doesn't actually make any difference to the book itself but I'm going to go uh, in the same one that I used in my original so envelope six five four three two one now obviously each of these envelopes has got an awful lot of flips and flaps on it but um, I want to put these into the book before we start to do that so when I come back if you're using your own envelopes the next bit will be of particular interest to you okay so we've made our envelopes these are some pre-made envelopes that I had in my stash you can tell I like graphic 45 can't you so I've got some graphic 45 square envelopes and I've just got some long coloured ones that I grabbed and I'm going to tell you how you work out the size of your cover which you will need to cut out of grey board I've used 1500 microns which is about one and a half millimetres thick which is I don't know in inches not very thick uh, what should we go for two two millimetres something like that two centimetres even two one eighth of an inch I know what I'm talking about anyway the way that you work out the size of your cover is this I'm just going to grab a piece of card that I can write on we've all got our little pieces haven't we and I am going to measure the length of my longest envelope and the height of my tallest envelope so using these pre-made envelopes as an example this is clearly my longest envelope I'm going to measure that and it measures eight and three quarter inches so eight and three quarter inches okay the height clearly this envelope is taller so the height of that envelope is five and a quarter inches five and a quarter inches so the size of my grey board I will need two pieces at eight and three quarter by five and a quarter inches 
if I'm using my own envelopes okay that's how I work out the size that I need for my cover I take the length and the height of the largest okay this one looking at these this is my longest envelope this is let's have a look eight and a half what have I said for let's have a look the length why is it always the last bit have I not cut that done that one out hmm okay hold on while well, i just grab it up from somewhere else just to make sure that my sizes are right so my length is eight and a half yes that's good so this is this one my length my longest envelope is eight and a half my tallest envelope is this one here and that is five inches okay let's just double check because i'd hate to get this wrong okay so my book is going to be eight and a half by five inches okay so if i grab myself a couple of pieces of gray board i am going to cut those out so i'm going to get my dodgy piece of my old I always keep a spare blade let's cut this at eight and a half by five inches okay so five by eight and a half and my other one by eight and a half now I always keep my um, bits of grey board to use instead of sticky foam pads to raise things up I hate having sticky fingers I know weird isn't it but there we go right I'm going to sneeze <laughs> pardon me okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover these and I'm going to do that by putting some double sided tape along I'm only spaced this out a lot because I haven't got much tape left but you can put it as close as you like I haven't got enough to do it I don't think um, you can put them as close as you like because it's only holding holding the, um, the pattern paper in place really and this is the same no matter whether you're using your own envelopes or pre-made envelopes okay from from this point on the process is exactly the same the only thing that will be slightly different is the size of your hinges but we'll come to that in a moment okay so let me just take that off oh I need nails okay let's get some pattern paper I'm going to lay that down on there like that let's change my blade back over Oh, I'm sorry about the light in here it's been a very strange day my neighbour's been having um, 
carpets put in and they've been banging so I couldn't film when I wanted to which was somewhat unfortunate so now it's the wrong time of day and there's bad light but never mind you'll just have to appreciate the evening sunshine with me So exactly the same process for this side. Take the backing off. There we go. my to that corner just rough miter it oh like to start with the ends so I'm going to fold those over I like to use a little bit of double-sided tape just to hold the paper in place while the wet glue dries so a little bit of tape and some wet glue Fold that over like that. There we go. Ends ends are done nicely. Same on this side. So fold over that end and that end. A little bit of tape. we're going to fold over those top bits so I'm just going to snip those ends off like that okay and then we're going to fold over these top and bottom bits like that and we're going to glue them down a little bit of tape to hold it in place like that let's fold that over a 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go off and I'm going to do the other one so that I've got my two covers nicely done. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to you about how we do the binding and putting the book together. This will differ ever so slightly between pre-made and your own made envelopes, but it's only one measurement and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you to do, uh, how to do is the spine. Now this is the covers, these are the covers that I've just done and I've just popped my envelopes in there so you can see that it all fits really nicely without any kind of, you know, sticky outy bits. Um, and if I was making a cover for this one, I'd do that in exactly the same way. But what we want to do now is we want to make the hinge, which is this very, very, here's what I made earlier, this very, very simple accordion hinge like this. Now, this hinge fits this book because the height of the hinge, this is the only thing that will change, providing you're only putting six pages in or six envelopes in, is the height of your hinge needs to be the height of your highest envelope. So as we remember that in this case, that was five and a quarter inches. So our hinge for this, this particular one would be five and a quarter inches by seven inches, okay? So because it's an accordion um, hinge, what you need to remember is that for each page, each envelope, you need one inch because this is scored every half an inch, okay? But you need one inch per envelope plus an inch over. So for instance, if I was making um, a book that had eight envelopes, eight pages, I would make this at my, the height of my highest envelope, which is five and a quarter in this case, plus nine inches. So it'd be five and a quarter plus nine because I've got eight pages. So that's eight inches plus one inch for my endy bits okay so it's one inch per page if you've got 10 pages not that i'd advise it but if you've got 10 pages it would be five and a quarter by 11 inches i hope that's making sense but that is how you decide on the size of the hinge for your book now this book as you know that i'm making here this has got six pages and the height is, I think, I'm going to have to check, five inches. Yeah. So my hinge, let me just see if I've got anything that's wide enough that I've used before. No. Let's start a new one. Let's have a look to see what this is. So I'm going to cut this. My hinge is going to be five inches because that is the height of my highest, my tallest envelope by seven inches which is the number of pages per inch plus one inch so that's six pages plus one inch equals seven okay so this is my hinge piece and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to grab my scoreboard i'm going to sigh because i've lost my embossing tool here it is And I'm going to score every half an inch. So I'm going to score on the seven inch side. Okay. So <coughs> the number of pages, which was six plus one inch, that's the bit that goes at the top. Okay. So we're going to score half an inch, one inch, one and a half inches, two inches, two and a half inches, three inches, three and a half inches, four inches four and a half inches, five inches, five and a half inches, six inches, six and a half inches. Okay, you'll probably see it better on this side. Pardon me. <coughs> so what you've got here are score marks every half an inch. And what I want you to do now is fold that one up first. Okay. This is going to be the bit that you see. This is the inside of my hinge. So the, make this bit the bit that you see. Fold the first one up. And then I want you to fold the rest of them in an accordion style. So that means just fold them backwards and forwards on each other. Okay. Very, very easy. Right. All the way along. 
just folding backwards and forwards on each other so you've got that nice accordion hinge going on okay okay you can burnish this if you want to as well but what you've got now as you can see is that accordion hinge there okay now I want to put my pages in but I want to start from the back because it's easier so if I just grab my envelopes in the order that I want to put them in from the back I've got a choice here because as you know this is the height of our tallest envelope so you can put if you've got an envelope that isn't that tall you can put it anywhere on that hinge you can put it at the top you can put it at the bottom you can put it in the middle so this one which was my my last piece that I made I'm going to glue onto this hinge here and you know what I'm going to glue it at the bottom because why not so just just to be clear you've got this hinge here that that single hinge that is going to attach to our cover so don't put anything on it then we've got this V here so don't stick anything on there but I want you to stick on here okay so not on there not on there but on here okay so I'm gonna stick that on there like that I'm not gonna glue it tight tight up to where the fold is because it's just gonna get in the way but I'm just gonna put some glue onto the edge of my envelope and I'm gonna glue that onto my hinge like that there okay so that is my first page in my hinge okay this piece we don't want to put anything on it but going to the next bit of the hinge so you see I've got nothing on there and then I've got something on this piece nothing on there but I want to put something on this piece here my next one this is my tall envelope so that is going to fit exactly on there now on my original I did it this way round which is absolutely fine because I wanted this so that I could put some decoration on it but just bear in mind that when you glue it on there you're going to lose the ability to open up that envelope so what you're going to need to do is cut it okay so if you just make a little mark there and just cut it your envelope that will then open like that when that envelope is glued into your book okay so I'm going to put some glue onto that hinge because I know this is the full height and I'm going to stick my envelope page on there like that Okay, line it up make sure everything's straight okay make sure that opens all right so now I've got my next page okay now this one I'm gonna put that I'm gonna put it at the top why not but you can put it anywhere you like so that's going to go on the next hinge at the top like that then I've got one of my little ones I'm going to put that at the top too actually I might just put that yeah I'll put it at the top you can put them anywhere you like this one I'm deliberately putting in the middle because when I added an insert to it I deliberately made it longer than than my um, than my envelope so this one I need to make sure I'm not putting exactly at the bottom so I'm going to put that kind of half and half something like that okay like that oh lights coming in again and then my final piece I'm going to pop down at the very bottom of that hinge down there 
like that okay so what I've got now are all the pages in my book oh that's so shy all the pages in my book like that I don't know if you can see but basically they are glued onto every alternate top hinge okay so I've got this which is where it's going to attach to my book cover and then I've got a page there a page there a page there 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 and there okay right I found it easiest to put my cover on next rather than do all the flippy flappy bits I found it a lot easier so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue onto that hinge onto the outside of that hinge there and I'm going to attach my cover okay so this cover is going to go right at the edge it's going to line up right to the edge of that cover okay so when I open it it's going to be like that with my accordion opening there okay same on the back I'm going to put some glue onto that hinge there and I'm going to attach my back cover there like that just make sure it all lines up and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it just to settle itself for a few minutes so I'm going to just clip that on like that and I'm going to leave that to one side okay so next what I want to do is cut out the spine piece um, that goes around our book here which will keep it all from flopping open and all over the place now I'm going to tell you how I work mine out if you're not following this tutorial and doing it yourself your spine obviously needs to be the height of your book times um, a decent amount going around so I have suggested that um, mine is cut um, at five by three inches which would be pretty much enough to um, to, to deal with six pages if you're going seven pages eight pages add on another half an inch um, as you go but what I've actually done with it here and I'll show you is that I have um, uh, use the scoreboard just to emboss uh, every quarter of an inch here so that it looks a little bit more curved okay so that's what we're going to do now so I'm going to just put my book to one side I'm going to grab my trimmer because I need to cut that out first don't I and as I recall that was five inches but I better just double check because that would be embarrassing uh, so that's five inches and I need to cut my um, spine piece at let's have a look what I've got here five inches by three inches so let's cut that at five inches by three inches okay and that is going to be my wrap around so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my scoreboard but I want this to be on the outside of my spine so I'm going to turn it over so that when I emboss um, you know with my embossing tool when I score um, it, you're going to see the lines bumpy okay so I, I want it so that my, my, my lines are bumpy on the outside so I'm putting it face down okay so I am going to score at half an inch and then I'm going to score every quarter of an inch until there's half an inch left so I'm going to score at half an inch three quarters one one and a quarter one and a half one and three quarters two two and a quarter two and a half okay so what I've got here is my spine that's got a half inch on either side okay I'm just going to put my scoreboard away a minute 
And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to fold on these because it's already curving, except the only places I'm going to fold is on those two half inch pieces there. OK, so what I'm going to do now is this is going to be a little bit strange, but bear with me. I'm just going to put half of this on. So I'm just going to put glue on the inside on that first half an inch score. And I'm going to put that right to the edge of my book. So that is just going to stick so that that in here that is where my score lines start okay and eventually I'm going to glue that on there but at this point I'm just going to glue it to that point so if I want to decorate up my cover I can do because I've already put this on uh, but I don't like this is going to sound a little bit strange but I don't like to put that on until the end okay I'm weird like that Okay, so what I want to do now is actually go and have a look through my book and I want to decorate it up and I want to add some more flips and flaps. Now, you can see mine's kind of starting to splurt all over the place. Don't worry about that at all. Basically, the spine is getting used to how it will be. And once it's all, all the bits are added on and once we've put this bit of spine on, it'll all sit quite nicely. Thank you very much. So don't worry if it just goes everywhere at the moment. That is absolutely fine. So what I've done is I've cut some pattern paper and I've just covered um, my the insides of my um, front and back covers. But here, if I just take you through, I'll show you. What I've done is I've added extra flips and flaps to these existing envelopes. So when I open this up, I've added a little flap here onto this flap here which gives me just a little bit of extra uh, room and that is a pull out insert okay and then there's, a, there's another pull out insert behind so if I start off by just showing you how I've put that together so we've got that there and then turn it over and I've got this bit that opens up and I've got those two bits behind that's my granddad okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the parts for that so if i grab my trimmer let's put that to one side i'm going to grab my trimmer and i am going to get some of this pattern paper and i've got loads of bits left over remember and um i am going to cut one at let me just double check this I think I've added something in I probably didn't need to four and a quarter by three so I'm going to cut one at four and a quarter by three okay so four and a quarter by three and then I want to cut my inserts and I want to cut one at four by six inches so I want to cut one at four by six inches now if you've got your own envelopes you can just basically go off and measure and put flips and flaps and all sorts of bits on you you know you, you get the idea i am sure uh okay then i want to cut one at three and three quarters by three and five eighths so let's just see which way round that is some of these sizes will be a little bit odd because when you notice on the back we've lost half an inch off that side you see there this half an inch here where our where our hinges are we've lost that on the back so it's not quite as simple as just cutting out the same sized pieces so let me just check this size three and three quarters by yep yeah, three and a half Ooh, squish that so let's have a look so three and three quarters three and three quarters by three and five eighths that will become clear why that's a bit of an odd number 
and then I want to cut two at three inches squared. Okay, so let's see what I've got left over here. See what I've got and I can cut at three inches squared and I want two of those. Okay. Right, so if I grab my scoreboard, let's start with this one. This doesn't need any scoring, that first piece that we cut, but this second piece, oh, I've lost one. I don't know how, how this happens. I've literally just had it in my hand, haven't I? So, so where's it gone exactly? Who knows? It's gone forever a different one oh, I don't like this one anyway this one which was four by six we're going to score on the six inch side at three inches okay so that's just going to fold over like that then we have got this piece which was that really odd size of three and three quarters by far three and five eighths and I want you to put it on the three and five eighths of an inch side okay and I want you to score at half an inch and I want you to score at five eighths of an inch. So, so what we're going to have is a little gusset. Okay, so we've got two parallel score lines. I don't know if you can see them here. We've got two parallel score lines there, and that's going to form a little bit of a gusset. And we're going to do exactly the same on these. Now, bear in mind that when these are on the page, they are going to be on either side. They're going to be opposite sides to each other. So I'm going to score at half and at five eighths of an inch on that one. And on this one, one, I am going to score at two and a half and two and three eighths of an inch only simply because that makes it easier for me to know how to put it onto my page okay so where's my little book here we go if I open that up my first page here which I'm going to round the corners of the bottom of this like that Okay, so I've rounded my corner and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this onto the top of that envelope, onto that flap, okay? So you see this flap here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue on there like that and I'm going to pop that on there like that. So I've now got, a f if it glues, hold on. Let's try and get it to stay okay so that is going to open up like that all right so that's that's my flap this piece that I've got I think I'll just round those corners too And let's fold that in half and just burnish that I'm going to slip inside that envelope there like that okay there we go so that sits on top of each other and I've got all those little flaps going on there so if I turn that over now what I want to do is put some stuff on the back and I've got these two pieces which go side to side which were the ones that we just um cut and scored so I'm just gonna round my corners which are the opposite corners to where the score lines are so if I fold on those score lines and burnish make sure that I burnish on the gusset okay what I will have is 
a flap with a little gusset like that which means that I can put something a little bit more dimensional underneath here okay so that is going to sit there and this one is going to sit on the other side like that there so let me just stick those on now when you're sticking this one on that goes on the right make sure that you're not going over your hinge okay so this is where the hinge is but I'm going to stick it down here so that is going to fit on there like that okay right slightly down from the top just ever so slightly down all right and now I'm going to stick this one on the other side that is going to go on there like that okay so I've got my two flaps that go on the back there like that this one has got the flap at the top so if I just fold on those score lines and burnish oh press too hard on that one this is going to fit on there like that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open these up I'm going to put some glue there and I'm going to put this in the middle like that so those will shut and that will go over the top like that okay so that is my page one now you will find as you um decorate this up that these become thicker and thicker and it's really going to bulk out our book i think what i'm going to do actually is just cut out the pieces for here because that's annoying me because it looks really untidy so eight and a half by five wasn't it let's have a look those down now you can always put little tuck spots and things on here if you want to I just put um, a, a photograph straight down on there but a tuck spot would be just fine very well did I there we go pop that on there like okay so that's nice and tidy all right so we've got my page one done what i want to do now is look at page two so what we've got going on on page two is we have got and this is why i put it in the middle we've got this pull out here that i've made that is shorter on one side than the other so it kind of hangs down a little bit but like I said, if you're using your own envelopes, you've just got to think of ways of making flips and flaps. So that goes there. And then on the back, what we've got is um, I, I've got space for um, a couple of um, the tags that I've popped there. So I'm going to work on that now. So let's put my book to one side, grab my trimmer and i am going to cut one at six and a half by seven and a half inches pardon me so six and a half is going to be the width i think better just check that hadn't i know it is six and a half six and a half by seven and a half 
okay that's my insert and then the um pocket that goes on the back is seven and a half by three inches so that's seven and a half by three and i think i can use one of these pieces here so seven and a half by three okay so scoreboard don't know why i put it over that side first of all i'm going to score on the insert and i'm going to score on the seven and a half inch side so that means seven and a half inches across the top there ah look what i found uh, and i am going to score at four and a quarter inches now let me think about this for i'm going to do it that way round because i want my this long piece the longer piece i want it to be at the front okay so just bear in mind when you're uh scoring which way round you want your paper now this is just a very very simple pocket so we're going to score on the seven and a half inch side at half an inch and at seven inches and then we're going to score on the three inch side at half an inch nice and easy so my insert i'm going to find my bone folder because i saw it earlier i'm just going to burnish that really well um, just because I can, I'm going to round those corners. Like that. And I'm going to pop that into my book. So that is going to open up like that. That is going to sit in there. Hopefully. Ooh. Too much glue like that so that my insert as you can see is longer than my than my envelope but it's not too long that it comes out of the bottom of the book okay so this envelope if you remember i put that halfway up so now i need to put in my little uh, pocket so i've got this piece which i have uh, scored and what i want to do now is mitre the corners so i'm going to take off this little square here and to do that i'm going to snip up to where the score lines intersect i'm going to change the angle of my scissors and i am going to mitre it but with a bit of a kink in it so that it's not straight because that way we avoid um kind of bulgy corners which isn't something that we really want so Let me just burnish those. I'm going to grab my book. Let's open it up and I'm going to pop that on the bottom there like that. OK, so some glue. On there. pop that on there that just goes up to where that the back of the hinge is if you're wondering now if you're using graphic 45 regular tags like i did you will need to cut them down so the ones that i've got here these aren't full size i've cut them down so that they fit in okay you get the idea right okay so that's page two page three which is another one of our little book uh, little envelopes we are going to grab our trimmers i don't know why i'm using this one never mind uh, and we are going to cut two let me just show you it first so you know what we're doing actually so page three we've got this flap and we've got this insert and then on the back we've just got that long flap there okay so we are going to cut two at four by six inches so two at four 
by six inches. Okay. And then we are going to cut one at four and a quarter by two and a half. So four and a quarter by two and a half. Okay. Right. So this is really easy and straightforward. If you grab your scoreboard, we'll start off with the two pieces that were four by six. And we're going to score on the six inch side at three inches. So we're going to score so it's directly in half. Okay. The same on both of them. This last piece, we are going to score. Remember where the flap's going. So the flap needs to go on the um, left hand side. So I'm going to score that flap at half an inch. Okay. Very easy. So I'm now going to fold on my score lines like that, burnish, and I am going to round my corners because I can. Now, page three or envelope three. OK, we have got an insert that fits in there like that, I hope. OK, so that's nice and easy. The other insert, what we want to do is glue it to that envelope flap so it's sitting directly above the insert that we've just put in. OK, so I'm going to get some glue. I'm going to add it onto the outside of that envelope flap like that. And I'm going to put, I'm going to do it this way around so I can see what I'm doing. I am going to put my, this is the um, fold on top of that flap like that sitting nicely on top of that envelope like that so what i've got here is i've got a flap that opens up like that and then i've got my pull out insert turn that over and this piece sits on there so just a little bit of glue on that flap and i'm going to put it right in the middle like that on top there so that is going to open just like that okay i'll be right back in a minute and we'll get on with the next page oh you can tell i'm well into the project now mess is starting to encroach so our next page let me just put this back to rights is this page here now this was one of our long envelopes if you'll remember but it opens up like this so it's kind of a gatefoldy type affair and that is attached to underneath here you can see that is attached to the envelope flap and then inside here i have just got two ordinary um photo mats which i've just decorated up okay a couple of different sizes there you can make them the same whatever takes your fancy and then on the back of that what i've got here is just simply one flap just to add a bit of interest now obviously as you, we're going through you can see that i've you know left um white card uh, for space for photos but there's nothing stopping you decorating it up journaling doing whatever you want to do it depends on the papers that you're using or what you want to use the book for of course so let's have a look at that one so i'm going to grab my trimmer and i'm looking at page four now so I want to cut one at nine and a half by four inches. Let's just put that somewhere safe. 
so nine and a half by four inches what have i got left over here lots of bits that might do that's definitely four inches so nine and a half oh that was close by four inches so nine and a half by four inches then i want to have one that is seven and a half by four inches these are my inserts i'm cutting out the wrong bits aren't i no seven and a half by four Yep, seven and a half by four. Okay, then um, I'll, I'll cut the back flap next, which was six and a half by four. Let's see if I've got anything that will go here. Six and a half by four. No. four by six and a half and then i need to cut my inserts which are seven and a half by three and three quarters which are seven and a half by three and three quarters oops to put that over there because i'll just get confused with it else and then i'm going to cut this at five and a half by three and three quarters now i'm just going to round those because these are my inserts and they don't need any special scoring so at this point i might as well just put them straight in so i don't lose them let's open up the book let's pop that on there and then that one too and now I'm going to work on this bit that goes on the front. Okay, so let's put that together. Let me grab my trimmer, uh, scoreboard even. And my, oh, I've lost it again. There it is. Right, okay, so I've got three pieces here. The one that is nine and a half by four. Four. I want to score on the nine and a half inch side except I'm going to do it this way around so I'm going to do it on the nine and a half inch side at one and three quarters of an inch now the reason that I'm doing it this way is because I want that to fold in that way okay so I want that to fold like that all right then I've got a piece that is seven and a half by four and I want to score on the seven and a half inch side and I want to score at half an inch but I'm going to score at seven inches because I want it to fold round that way okay so that's going to fit on there like that so that opens up like that okay and then this piece which is the piece for the back this is let me think six and a half by four inches and we're going to score on the four inch side at half an inch okay so all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fold on all of those score lines and I am going to burnish them if I can find my bone folder here it is okay so let's just burnish there burnish there now this piece I'm going to put some glue inside that flap there and I'm going to attach 
this onto there like that up to that score line so it forms a booklet okay so that is going to open up like that okay now if you want to you can round your corners I'm going to round them on that back flap there like that so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop that on top like that so some glue it's not going to fit exactly so you're going to want to center it side to side I'm just going to turn that around so I can see that it lines up properly I'm going to pop that on the top there like that so that now opens like that but it also opens up like that and then I've got my photo mats in there now if I turn that over this piece some glue on there and I'm going to put this in the center of this um, the back of this envelope it will not fit exactly it's going to need to be centered that's the design feature I didn't want it to be the same width so now I've got a little flap that goes on there like that now next this piece you'll be delighted to hear I've left that blank because I just wanted to decorate it up so what we'll do in a minute is we'll come back and we'll have a look at this which opens up the flap up like that and then like that and then we've got space in here for a photo mat okay so page five we're just working on the back which is nice and quick and easy so I want you to cut one at six and a half by which I've got loads of this paper in it six and a half by five and five eighths so six and a half by five and five eighths so six and a half by five and five eighths then I want you to cut one at six and five eighths by five inches so six and five eighths by five inches now if you're following my cutting guide I will just say that when I tell you a size I'm always going to talk about the across first so six and five eighths is the width of the piece and five inches is the height okay then um, for your insert into your envelope this is your photo mat I want you to cut one at six and a half by four and a half. Ooh, avalanche. So six and a half by four and a half. to bit out we shall soon find out so my insert my photo mat I'm just going to round the corners on that one and I might just as well pop it straight into my book so if I open up onto this one if you remember I'm leaving this page blank because I'm going to decorate it up and then that is going to fit nicely no it's not it's too white no it is it's going to fit course need to snip that across let's try it without my glasses because I cut that off didn't I so you know where we cut up cut across as well so you've got that whole opening 
pop that in there like that there we go so now <clears throat> pardon me we've got these two pieces so we're going to need our scoreboard and our embossing tool or whatever we use to anybody got any idea what i might have done with it this time here we go right so let's have a look we've got this piece which is six and five eighths by five and a half was that the first one six and five eighths no that was the second piece so let's start with the first piece that we cut which was six and a half yes by five and five eighths i want you to score on the five and five eighths inch side so that means five and five eighths at the top I'm looking at the wrong one right six and a half yes six and a half by five and five eighths that's this one i am going to score on the five and five eighths inch side so that's five and five eighths inch at the top at half an inch and then also at five eighths of an inch because i want a little bit of a gusset so i've got two parallel score lines going on there okay then this one which was six and five eighths by five i'm going to score and my flap is going to go on oh, the lights i'm going to go hang on it's better uh, i'm going to score at half an inch and i'm going to score at five eighths of an inch okay so while i'm here i might oops just as well throw things at myself i'm just gonna round those corners on the opposite side from the scores and the same on this one and i'm gonna fold and i'm gonna burnish so let's just see if i plug in this light see if this is any better although being an led i think it's going to be the same uh, could be worse right so let's burnish okay so i've got my little gusset like that and then this one goes at the top so if i fold on that score line burnish and then the other score line and burnish i can then glue these into my book so this bit as you remember i'm leaving that clear so what i'm going to do is i am going to glue this piece onto this side here so i'm going to lift this up i'm going to lift that up and i'm going to pop that on there like that onto the far left hand side okay now we're going to have a little bit of a problem in theory i'm just going to chop that off okay so that that lines up with the um the bit of uh i don't know what you call that the bit that comes down okay so that's going to fit on there like that now really ideally we need to make sure that this has got a bit of a gusset in it as well so this is where it gets a little bit trickier so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fold a little gusset it might be easier said than done yeah i want you to fold this so we've got a little gusset at the top OK, 
okay so that will fold over nicely because with having a gusset on this side that's made made it rise up a bit so this one we are going to glue this onto the back here now we're not going to need glue all the way along let's just stick that on there like that at the top some glue on there close that up and that is our flap over the top and then we've got that one and these can actually go which whichever way you like they can go either way okay now our final piece is this one here which we've got this is i've just left this as a very simple um, envelope and we've got here we've got a photo mat that just slips in there so that's very quick and easy and simple And then on the back we've got two things we've got this pulley out like that and here we've got a little pocket that i've put full size tags in so that they come over the top a bit okay right so let's put these to one side while that all dries and i am going to cut one at eight by four which is my insert so let's see if i've got a piece that will do for that doesn't look like it so let's go eight by four so I'm just going to pop that in so that goes in there like that and then on the back we need to cut a piece that is 12 by four and a half inches and then i want you to cut one that is nine by three inches okay so nine by three inches right scoreboard our piece that was 12 by four and a half we're going to score on the 12 inch side we're going to score at four and we're going to score at 11 and a half inches okay the piece that is nine by three we're going to score on the nine inch side at half an inch and at eight and a half inches and then we're going to score on the three inch side at half an inch okay so this piece this is going to fold in a bit of a weird way so what we want to do is fold this like that so that's the four inch piece 
and then back like that okay around those edges there and we'll glue this in first so as I look at the back here I'm going to glue that on there like that so some glue oops on there like that glue it right to the edge of the back of that envelope let's try and get it lined up it looks tidy and then I need to put my uh, pocket in so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mitre these corners take off that square where the score lines intersect and I'm going to do it not straight but with a bit of a kink in it Let's fold on those score lines see if it fits yep that's going to fit exactly in between the hingy bit pop that on the bottom there glue that down and that is our book put together now I found it easier personally to decorate it all up before I added this last bit in at the moment it looks really thin but I guarantee you as soon as you start decorating this up it is going to expand hugely so once it's all decorated up my final piece was literally to just put some glue line it up up to that half inch score that first score that we did with the edge of the cover the hard cover and then there's the book so at the moment it doesn't look like it's going to expand much but trust me it really will so that is how to put together a little book with lots of envelopes like i said you can use uh, ready-made envelopes you don't have to use um uh you know these these you don't have to make your own if you've got lots of ready-made ones then you can absolutely do that um, and that is how we put it together so I hope you've had fun with this I would absolutely love to see what you're making so do put them into the graphic 45 group and um, it would make me really happy to see um, to see if you you've had a go at this um, and uh, I'll be sure to respond to everybody who who has a go at making a book because um, I really appreciate that it means a lot and I love to see what you do with the papers that you use makes me really excited so thank you very much for bearing with me uh, for um, this class I hope you've enjoyed it and I will be back really soon I hope with another one so take care everybody go and cut into that graphic 45 don't just stash it bye